you can raise your kids to be really healthy and start being anti-toxic all in the same step. It's really manageable. But what I hear, the myth is, oh, it's so hard because every, everything is polluted, by the way. It's really bad out there. That's why I'm doing this. But I'm saying on a personal level, you do have a lot of agency. You do have the agency. Welcome back to another episode of the Peak Performance Life Podcast. Today, I am absolutely thrilled to have a special guest who is an expert in a very, very important topic that I think is highly overlooked. Uh, some people call me a little bit of a detective, uh, but I think what you're going to learn today is going to really open your eyes. And we have our guest today is David Steinman, who is an award-winning journalist who has written best-selling and critically acclaimed books on the environment and health. His work in the area of safe cosmetics, taken from the forthcoming book, Raising Healthy Kids, which should be out by the time you're listening to this, is featured in the HBO Max documentary, Not So Pretty, right? So uh, that's the upcoming book, Raising Healthy Kids, which actually should be out by the time you're listening to this. His investigative reporting and writing have won awards from Best of the West, California Newspaper, Publishers Association, Sierra Club, and the Green Book Festival. He's also the full-time chief officer of the nonprofit Chemical Toxin Working Group, a public interest environmental and consumer advocacy organization that takes legal action and litigates on behalf of consumers and the environment, which is awesome. CTWG has won major court and legal cases against brands such as Herbal Essences, Pantene, Chicken of the Sea, Bumblebee, Alberto V05, Trader Joe's, and Mrs. Myers for selling products with high amounts of toxic chemicals that required their removal or labeling. So this is, I'm super excited for this. I'm sure we're all going to learn a lot. David, thank you so much for joining us here today. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad to be here with you. Well, this is such an interesting topic. I think it's one that's not talked about enough. Tell us a little bit about how you got started in this, uh, investigating this area. Well, uh, you know, I, I've been doing this for, as a journalist and activist for uh, decades. So, and my own story is, is told in, in my own books. But you know what? I mean, I could take you from where I grew up in Los Angeles, but I'd rather take you from there really quickly um, to where I was this last week. My nonprofit group, Healthy Living Foundation, is working with folks in Louisiana. And we're dealing with water quality. Mm. And it's so important to healthy kids, um, the quality of your water. Well, I was in an area of Louisiana called Isle de St. John Charles. I know I'm not saying it the way they do it down there, but that's where I was. That island has nearly fallen into the waters. I was driving along, and the waters are so high now that they're losing their land. So, you know, where I was 40 years ago, we weren't worrying about losing portions of Florida and Louisiana, but I was there this weekend and we really are. So the imperative to live healthy is not just for ourselves, but it's really to protect our, our, our country, our land, our people. Because if we don't start changing the way we shop, not only will we not be healthy, but our earth will continue to become warmer. And um, places like uh, the Isle de St. John Charles, which is really beautiful. It, it was the refuge for Native Americans in Louisiana. They've since been moved because of the high water. They're refugees now, climate refugees. But all this is happening because of the petrochemicals that are going into the products that we're using with our children. It was worse 40 years ago when I started. It's bad today, but I'm trying to make it all manageable um, with my experience and in my new book, Raising Healthy Kids. Yeah, I mean, it's um, and also it's interesting. It's like the same things that we don't want to put in our body anyway are the same things that, you know, a lot of the same things that are hurting the environment as well. So I know I'm, I'm pretty amazed at some of the things that we're a, that people are that companies are putting in products in this country compared to other countries i think that have better laws uh, at least some of them do so what are some of the i, I guess let's jump into some of the kind of highlights of your of your book maybe or some high level kind of thoughts and ideas and around which what areas are 
kind of are you really the most concerned about? Well, it's 360 degrees. It's everything. And that's what's beautiful about being anti-toxic. It's almost like a philosophy of life, a way of looking at things. Well, it is. Yeah. But if you, if you want to jump in anywhere, you know, we were talking about uh, teenage daughters mm -hmm. or our daughters who are tweens. And that's a great place to start about being health, creating a healthy family and how that translates into healthy neighbors for everyone. Just to give you an example, my own, two of my own teens came home at one time. One of them brought home English leather cologne. I'm sure everyone has heard of it because it's been around since the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. And canoe cologne for women. And um, we took them to the lab and we measured them for the amount of phthalate in them. Now, wow. phthalate is a microplastic. Would we talk about being anti-plastic? Well, they put little nanoplastics into colognes to hold them closer to your skin, to weigh them down so they don't evaporate, to give that spray a little texture so that it will remain on your skin. But the phthalates are what are known as endocrine disruptors. Mm -hmm. And that means they can imitate the sex hormone estrogen or interfere with the body's production of the male hormone testosterone. Mm -hmm. As it turns out, those phthalates that were in their cologne and perfume um, have severe effects on reproductive health, can increase risk of breast cancer, can cause cognitive uh, difficulties when exposed during pregnancy, and can cause um, uh, changes in gender behavior. Wow. All of this is because of their endocrine disruption. So here are my kids, and who knows how many kids, parents of kids are listening right now, and you walk into your daughter's bedroom and it smells like the body shop you know it's just full of all those aromas and fragrances are filled with phthalates so my kids i had to show them look this is not the best product for your health and it's difficult to find um, naturally derived fragrances but you can do it i swear i've done it on amazon mm -hmm. that don't use phthalates and it's much healthier for them but the thing is those phthalates that are in uh, the cosmetics like um, shampoos uh, fragrances like perfumes and uh, uh, body washes, anything with fragrance on it is very likely to have phthalates. We've measured them in many different products. That's one key. But those same products with phthalates, well, the folks I was talking about in Louisiana, their drinking water in some areas of where they get it from the Mississippi River, especially upriver toward Cancer Alley, their water contains phthalates. Oof. And it's, you know, imagine being pregnant and drinking water with phthalate in it every day. So right. when you as a consumer, me as a parent, become anti-toxic and really intervene with our kids and say, here are safer cosmetics. And you can buy organic cosmetics that will be largely free from phthalate. You can do it. It's really manageable. We've created this market. And you say, hey, I want to protect my daughter. You're also protecting folks all the way back in Louisiana that we might not even know personally. But they're really good people. Some of them have strong Cajun accents. Some of them have softer Southern draws. They say, dear. They like their sweet tea. They're really kind. We're protecting folks that are really our neighbors. So that's being anti-toxic and taking protecting your family to the nth level because it's really a ripple effect. If we all did this, we would cut down the amount of phthalate exposed. And those folks wouldn't always have to be drinking water with phthalate in it. Yeah, that's a really good one. And it's interesting. I went to dinner not too long ago. And for some reason, it was, it was, a uh, must have been about five couples. I think it was five or six couples. And, and one of the ladies asked, Oh, what is, what does everyone wear for cologne or perfume? And everyone, you know, rattled off some names of their cologne, or whatever designer cologne or perfume. And I was actually like, they got to me and I was actually kind of surprised because I, I, I don't know, I'm very sensitive to this stuff. So I can kind of, Maybe just as I got healthier, I become more and more sensitive to these smells. But I basically, I said, I, have, I haven't worn cologne in many, many years. I, I, I almost like, I can't even imagine it. But I, it, so it actually brought me back down to earth and, I, and made me realize, wow, like everyone, pretty much everyone is, is wearing some sort of cologne and, and it probably has these, these phthalates that you're talking about in it. And, you know, the, the thing is that, that we do have, you know, studies that show these phthalates really do affect you know, if you're using cologne and you're pregnant, don't do that. That's just, that's really a bad time to use it because 
Studies show that children born from mothers who had the highest levels of everyday phthalates, in other words, they were high normal, um, those kids had the most cognitive um, disabilities and a t- tension deficit hyperactivity disorder risk. Mm. So you really want to cut down, uh, especially during pregnancy. And, you know, I, I think you're really smart the way you're doing it. Just use it when it's really needed. But if you can avoid it, you'll be healthier. And as I said, you can find alternatives that are based on natural scents. Would those be mostly like essential oil scents scents and stuff like that? Or what what should people look for? So someone's listening right now. They're going to say, okay, well, I wear perfume. I wear deodorant. I use body wash. I use shampoo. How can I make better decisions? What should I look for? So for everything you named, but the the fragrances that you spray on, because those are the most difficult um, to replace. For everything you named, though, the body washes, the shampoo, the soaps, those that are pretty much conventionally produced and say parfum or fragrance on them Mm. are very likely to have the phthalates. However, the price difference between those and ones that are organic and they'll say contains certified organic ingredients, the price difference is very minimal and they won't have phthalates or at least be far more like unlikely to have them. So you can make those choices really easy. Now it seems easy when I'm explaining it, But if you have teenage kids, they just buy what they want, whether it's cheap or what they want at the moment. Their brains are still way underdeveloped. Take it from me. I was a teenager and I've raised them. But uh, you got to intervene for the kids. You know, as an adult, you can go say, I'll buy the organic. For your kids, you got to get them off the herbal essences, Pantene. Um, There are lots of reasons. We actually sued Procter & Gamble for having a carcinogen in their uh, uh, herbal essences and Pantene shampoos. Wow. It's a carcinogen called 1,4-dioxane, and they weren't telling the public they had it, and they had it at really high levels when we sued them. Um, we won the lawsuit, and they agreed to reduce their levels, and we retested them. It's still there. It's about 90% reduced, which is good for the population. I still wouldn't use that product because I don't want any of a carcinogen. Mm-hmm. So. You know, another thing to look for when you're buying those shampoos and stuff, this is a really good little tip. Mm -hmm. A lot of shampoos contain an ingredient called sodium laureth sulfate. And that middle ingredient is L-A-U-R-E-T-H. And that last portion, the E-T-H, tells you it's an ethoxylated alcohol. And anything that ends in E-T-H on a cosmetic product label is likely to contain 1,4-dioxane. So try to avoid all the products with ingredients that end in ETH, like sodium laureth sulfate, sodium myrith sulfate, ceterith sulfate, they will all be, uh, there's a good chance they'll have small amounts of dioxane. Now, organic products don't use these. The organic products are what are going to help keep the climate healthier because they're not relying on petrochemicals because anything with an ETH is based on petrochemicals. It's very rare though. So we actually came out with a peak performance organic organic body wash, but actually they recently uh, had to change the formula. I think they made it better. It's still made with organic ingredients, but it was just fell just below the USDA certified organic. And the reason I made that, by the way, the reason I specifically sought out someone who could make that, because I, I really couldn't find many. You know, if you go on Amazon, they're really, you know, and I was really scratching my own itch here. I use it myself every day because I can't there's not that many options. I don't know if you have any brands or websites you recommend that that can help people filter for, you know, yeah. de, you know, deodorant. Yeah, that, that's wash. great that you're doing that, by the way. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And your customers will appreciate it, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's really considerate. But there are brands out there. These are the ones that I have found are the best. That doesn't mean they're perfect. I'll give you an example. I, in my new book, Raising Healthy Kids, How to Protect Your Children from the Hidden Chemical Toxins in Our Everyday Lives, I recommend uh, Burt's Bees because it's widely available and inexpensive. It's 99% good. There's one ingredient it has um, called phenoxyethanol, which I don't like in natural products. Sometimes manufacturers are a bit constrained because of regulations and the lack of total innovation for preservatives. But I think Burt's Bees is okay for, you know, for something that's 99% safe. Uh, Wellita, Lagona, Avalon. These are body washes? Um, I, I don't know if Burt's Bees does a body wash. That's it, yeah. 
I think Avalon does a body wash that's good. Burt's Avalon Bees is a organic. deodorant then? Uh, Burt's Bees would be a deodorant? or um, uh, Burt's Bees, I don't know about their deodorants. I mean, they're safe, but I don't yeah. buy them. Okay. But there are a number of um, – for deodorants, you really do want to avoid phthalates and parabens. And the way to do that is a lot of brands advertise that they're free from phthalates and parabens, which is helpful but not always accurate. Sometimes they're fudging on the truth. We know that from our legal investigation. But, you know, you can get a zirconium. Those are kind of the rock-like um, antiperspirants. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom's of Maine makes one uh, that is uh, 99% good. And, um, again, there are organic uh, pers- uh, and deodorants and antiperspirants. What you don't want to use are the spray ones. Those right. hopefully are going out of fashion because those sprays tend to have benzene in them. And uh, you don't want to spray a powerful toxin like benzene onto your own um, body or, you know, your child's. Right, right. Yeah, I haven't, uh, I'll have to look and see. What do you think about native deodorant is the big popular kind of natural one? Uh, I don't know if you've tested that one or looked into that. They claim to be paraben free. Oh, wow. I don't know that one. I, let me look at it while we're, that, that's really interesting. Yeah, native deodorant. Uh, it, it was it was built up and uh, sold. It they actually did sell to Procter and Gamble, I believe, a few years ago. But they uh, they supposedly are sticking to their guns of being a kind of a a natural uh, paraben free deodorant. So, yeah, and for let's, people let's who are used that. to it, yeah. As, as when I was younger, I used to use these antiperspirants, and and there's no question they they work a lot better, but they're just so bad. The aluminum and all the stuff in there, I would never use any any of those again. You have to. Even if you have to apply twice a day or whatever it is, you have to you have to use a natural deodorant. I think. I I told I totally agree with you. I'm looking at, at native right now. Simple and effective ingredients. Let me see what they are. Well, oh, you see, I I'm always a little concerned when I can't find the ingredients right away, <laughs> and yeah. they're way down, and you have to keep scrolling. But let's take a look. Yeah. This, we're, at, we're at the site now. Coconut oil, okay. Shea butter, okay. Baking soda, okay. Tapioca starch, okay. Probiotics, okay. Oscarite, okay. Magnesium hydroxide. Capric triglyceride, okay. Cyclodextrin, okay. Glucose, okay. Yeah, uh, that would pass. Thank oh, you. Nice. Oh, we're going uh, – newsflash, we will include it in the final edition of Raising Healthy Kids. That's great. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's in Target and everywhere else and Amazon and everything as well. So, yeah, we've been using that one. So, so the lesson there is kind of interesting. It's like, look, people, this is all easy to do now. Don't throw your hands up and feel helpless. Even mm-hmm. when I was down in Cancer Alley and people would say, what's organic food? Where is it? I'd say, let's go down to the local Winn-Dixie. Let's go down to the local Walmart. And look at those carrots that are organic are the same mm-hmm. price as the conventionally grown ones. So, mm-hmm. you know, your point is great. It's you can raise your kids to be really healthy and start being anti-toxic all in the same step. It's really manageable. But what I hear, the myth is, oh, it's so hard because every, everything is polluted, by the way. It's really bad out there. Right. That's why I'm doing this. But I'm right. saying on a personal level, you do have a lot of agency. You do have the agency. And, and yeah. you know, yeah. I'll, I'll just give you another example from my trip down there. I just got back. There's a school down there that's located right next to a plastics plant. Hmm. And the level of a carcinogen is about up to 700 times above what the EPA recommends. There's about 325 kids being exposed. My nonprofit and I, along with Earth Friendly Products. And if you're looking for cleaning products, Earth Friendly Products Ecos is really good. I think they're really the best brand. We've tested them. They're very conscientious. And, you know, uh, just to be really clear, we are working with them to bring air filters down to all the kids at the school right next to the plastics plant because they need that help because they're breathing this. And these same chemicals can cause cancer later in their lives, kidney disease, immune dysfunction. And also we're going to bring green cleaning products and teach them that they do have agency. Now we would love to see that interloper plastics plant out, you know, because the school's been there a lot longer and it was a bad public health decision. 
but I can't move Louisiana government that fast. No one can. Right. Right. So we have to take care of the kids now. So, you know, when I say it's 360 and it's, it's manageable, we're doing it even in Cancer Alley. We're helping kids to live healthier lives. You do have that agency as a, as a mom, as a parent, as a dad. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Can I ask you about candles? What do you think about burning uh, candles? My daughter, one of my daughters especially, loves candles now all of a sudden, and they have different scents. So I, I'm always wondering. Yeah, I I would be really concerned again about, since we're on this, this is the show of phthalates, mm -hmm. it would be very likely that there's phthalates in those candles to fix the fragrance into them. And, you know, also, Dad, I, I just would really worry about a fire. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I just worry about the really obvious things, too. And every kid does that, by the way. There yeah. hasn't been a kid born since the year uh, 2001 who hasn't burnt candles. Right. When mm -hmm. they reach the age of 12 or 13. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so probably probably watch out there, especially for the, for the scented yeah. ones. And really anything scented, right? I've heard that those plugins. And it's going to irritate their lungs, too. Yeah, I know. Like those, the, those plugins, the things you plug into the wall that have the scents, I heard those are really, really bad. The, the again, if fragrance is going to be fixed into the formula with phthalate, mm -hmm. not always, but a large percentage of the time, maybe, yeah. you know, I don't want to give a figure, but a large percentage. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so those plugins aren't good. But, but again, there are natural scents you know, sprays that you can use um, that are derived from, this is where the essential oils work especially well yeah. that you can use for your room. And, um, you know, even if they're burning incense and stuff, it's still not real good for their lungs. And certainly the um, candles may have phthalate in them as well. Yeah. Yeah. So are there any like websites that you that are, that are the go-to websites like let's say someone wants to buy makeup for their kids or something like that and there's so many ingredients in there you don't know even know what the names of half these ingredients are what's the best move for for that is there is well, there we um I, I i'm a big fan of skin deep from environmental working group i think they've done a great job what, what i'm trying to do though in raising healthy kids is just get you to look at the label quickly scan it because mm -hmm. You don't have to know every ingredient. You just have to know the bad ones. Yeah. You know, yeah. and there's like two, you know, there's like a couple dirty dozen bad ingredients for cosmetics. Once you see them, you know, and then once you find the brands you like, brands are usually very consistent. If one product is good, generally it's a philosophy that carries through the entire brand line. And so you can, you can find a brand that you like. In my book, I'm Raising Healthy Kids, we do shopping charts. So we do rate probably about Oh, probably about a hundred different cosmetic brands, you yeah. know, and, you know, I can tell you offhand, you know, some of the toxic ones like Estee Lauder, L'Oreal, All May, Maybelline, you know, you want to look for um, makeup that has less uh, uh, contamination. Again, there are phthalates in there. There's some heavy metals we found, lead, but we make, there's good choices too for foundation and all that. So, her skin Deep is great, mm -hmm. and I think Raising Healthy Kids, uh, my book is great, too. You can go to healthylivingfoundation.us, which is our website, and we rate products there, too. So that's another place to go, healthylivingfoundation.us. Amazing. And Skin Deep, that's a, that's a website that like rates brands and stuff like that? Yeah, it's, it's a EWG, Environmental Working Group. It's really popular. You just uh, Folks, just Google Skin Deep. The mm -hmm. thing is, it's just, I love it. But I, as again, as I said, when you're shopping, you can't always be Googling back and forth through databases. So I'm just trying to shorthand it all and say, here's how to read a label. And here's what to look out for, like the ETH compounds. If they're in there, you don't need them. You can find better products, same price. Yeah, yeah um, I agree. It, yeah. That's something I try to do in terms of health and food. I'm like, you have to be a label detective. I, even my wife, you know, she'll She'll buy certain things, and I'm like, you didn't, you didn't look at the back of the label. You didn't see this ingredient or that ingredient in it. And I know it's not easy. It takes a little time to to build up that education at first, and and you know most people unfortunately don't do it. But I think I want to learn now about the, you know, I want to learn from from raising healthy kids about the things I need to be a detective for on different different products uh, that I'm putting on my body or in my house. 
And I think just the same way people need to be able to read the back of a, of a food label supplement fact as well. I'll give you just a couple examples, too, of that. Three examples. One mm -hmm. of the things we have to do is break through the myth that organic foods, for example, are more expensive than conventionally grown. Some organic foods are, but, but being an activist and a, a parent of multiple kids living on a budget, I've learned to find bargains. And, to, and what I have found is that the staples like lettuce, potatoes, celery, carrots, because of the demand for organic foods that began 30, 40 years ago, We've created those markets for shoppers today where they can find these foods priced at very competitive, sometimes less expensive prices than the mm -hmm. conventionally grown. And that's a big advantage to your kids because conventionally grown produce tends to have neurotoxic pesticides that harm their brain development, whether it's during pregnancy or as they're growing up and can increase their risk for learning disabilities and uh, behavioral issues. So. The myth is it's more expensive, but do your shopping and look for bargains. For example, if the fresh strawberries are too expensive, um, get a two or three pound pack of fresh frozen strawberries and some non-fat yogurt for your kids. It's a great dessert, very competitively priced, and none of the many toxins that are found on conventionally grown strawberries. Plus the non-fat yogurt uh, won't have pesticides because in dairy, all the pesticides accumulate in the fatty portion. Hmm, and, and then, you know, another thing about uh, when you're shopping and, and uh, just trying to protect yourself, you have to, for example, with cleaning products, you know, there may not be a lot of places to go to, but again, as you said, you can look at the label and you can find uh, safe products. And another important area would probably be, for example, your child's school. Hmm. I tell this a really tragic, a really tra tragic story of a parent who was taking their kids to a preschool and they never got their water tested. And that preschool had PFAS in their drinking water for the kids. When it was finally discovered, they had very high levels. So another important tip is get, get your water. If you're going to, a, if you're taking your kids off to a preschool, get the water report, get it tested. Interesting. Because it's really, you, really important. How do we, yeah, how do we do that? So let's say I want to get my water report, or is there a tester I can buy from Amazon and test the water myself? Yeah. So a good test is maybe out of some people's uh, financial means. For example, to get a really thorough test that includes the forever chemicals called PFAS plus typical solvents and others could be three to $500, which mm -hmm. is very expensive. So I... Uh, your public school should have a record, though. Most states are requiring testing. Doesn't mean they're complying, but you should ask your public school for their testing record. If they don't have it, I would um, have your kid bring uh, their own water in a stainless steel flask to school yeah. until you get proof. Same thing for a preschool. Now, if you're on a budget and you're saying, well, I only have $100, you know, again, I get to all these myths where they're trying to make you feel like it's not manageable, but say you had $100 to protect your family. I would spend about $30 and get a little faucet filter, one that fits at the end of your uh, sink faucet. Those aren't the best, but they'll still reduce contaminants by a high percentage. Mm. Now, then I would add maybe a zero tolerance water pitcher, and I would filter the water through my faucet filter into my zero tolerance pitcher, which cleans PFAS too. The forever that's, like, that's like the zero TDS brand, zero TDS. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's certified by the national sanitation foundation to remove the PFAS chemical too at a very high mm. percentage. So I would then use that. So it's a double filtration system for about $60. I would do that before I test it. Because most water does have some kind of either legally uh, required contaminant from disinfectant byproducts or undesirable contaminants from pollution. So I would filter over testing. And you've just done it for $65, and you can buy these at Amazon. If you have another extra $20, buy yourself a shower filter for your kids. Mm -hmm. Because the same chemicals that you can drink can also become airborne and you can breathe them in, which is the equivalent of just ingesting um, several liters of water of them. Shower filter with a 
um, say a carbon filter is about 15 or $20. So you've spent about $80. That's the best $80 you'll spend on your health, better than the health insurance. Now, what are we spending on health insurance these, these days? Oh, my. Right. That's interesting. I, you know, I hadn't heard about that. And actually, one of the earlier episodes of this podcast was the first time I ever heard of like a, a shower head. And he had said something like, buy one that filters out chlorine and heavy metals, ideally, something like that. And I know some of those were a little more expensive than what you mentioned. Uh, I had never heard of it before then. I, he actually said it might be good for your hair. It's probably better for your skin. I mean, it's very interesting that I've, I don't hear many people at all talking about having a special filtered shower head, but it makes a lot of sense. You're spraying your body every single day with this water, unfiltered water. So is it, is it the, the one you mentioned, is it, does it also take out heavy metals and chlorine as well? Yeah, and these are ones that fit on the stem, between the stem and the shower head, but you can get them in the shower head too. Okay. And they have activated carbon. Activated carbon is not great for PFAS, but it's excellent for heavy metals and chlor chlorine and organic uh, volatile organics chemicals like um, solvents. So what would you look for the, in, for that to buy that? You would look for some shower filter? Yeah, I would go to Amazon and put in a, sh a shower carbon shower filter. And you'll carbon see them for about $20. I know because nice. we've, bought, we've bought them and they work great. I'm just trying to say that we've mm -hmm. got to be activists because, you know, we've kind of started this interview with me going to the Isle de Saint John, de Saint Jean Charles, which is disappearing because of all these petrochemicals, yeah. you know, and now we're talking about doing things to protect our health so we can be healthy and smart and make better choices for our kids and along the way vote for a planet that's going to be sustainable for them too. So maybe there will be in another 50 years an island called Isle St. John Charles and it won't be underneath the water. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Curious your opinion on fluoride. Is that a, a, something that you consider like a toxic chemical or have you done any research around that? Yeah, well, fluoride in very small amounts is necessary to human health. But I've spoken to public health experts before. And the reason why they're dumping it into our drinking water is there's two reasons. One, it's being sold by the um, uh, mining industry, uh, the, uh, the fertilizer industry, I believe, is where it's coming from. Hmm. And uh, two, the theory is, well, not everyone brushes their teeth with fluoride. And so we'll make up for it by letting them drink it, which is great if you don't brush your teeth with fluoride or you don't take care of your teeth. But a lot of us, I don't, but a lot of people do use fluoridated toothpaste and they're getting plenty of flu fluoride already in their crest or their Colgate. And they don't need the extra and the extra can cause the teeth and bones to become brittle and break. Mm -hmm. So you, so there's way too much fluoride generally that, uh, that healthy people are being exposed to because they're already taking care of their health and they don't need it. Yeah. 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 I'm not a fan. Uh, just from what I've heard, I don't use, uh, I use fluoride free toothpaste as well. Like you said, I think we're probably getting enough fluoride just unintentionally <laughs> that, uh, I def I, I prefer not to brush my teeth. So I, I use like a Dr. Bronner's peppermint, uh, you know, fluoride free toothpaste. That one works great for me, and yeah, don't have the fluoride. Yeah, Bronner's, by the way, is a great brand. Oh, yeah. you, this brings us right back to body washes. They have that beautiful liquid soap that is phthalate-free. It's a great body wash, Dr. Bronner's liquid soap, of course. Yeah, is it, is it a bar or Dr. it's actual, actual like the, the, the Castile soap uh, that you can use for cleaning or body wash or anything, that yeah. one? Yeah. Well, they have one specifically uh, just for, you know, washing, yeah, for washing – they say you can use it for washing, shampooing, and everything. It's a yeah. great baby soap. If you're going to use soap for your okay. baby, it's a great one. I know the folks there, and they're really taking extreme precautions to produce a safe product. So Dr. Bronner's is a terrific choice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen the brand a few times and, and met some of the people there and, and was very impressed uh, at uh, the way they, they treat their products. So very cool. Anything else that people should know? Any other topics that we didn't cover that uh, I know, obviously, in your book, people should get Raising Healthy Kids to go much, much, for, much more of a deep dive on things and actually learn how to read the back of, uh, of the product bottles. 
But uh, anything else uh, we should touch on here? Any other? Oh, oh, I, I've really enjoyed it. I guess my message is to be anti-toxic is to be a little more active. It's kind of to seek out things. And, mm. uh, you know, just be a little more conscientious of what's going on. I'll just give you one last shopping example. Mm -hmm. Back in February, before we leave 2023, there was an accident in Palestine, Ohio. Train derailed and uh, polyvinyl chloride uh, was released into the environment and people ended up breathing this very powerful carcinogen. So and the other day I'm shopping for hoses because my hose is broke. Every hose you look at on, on Amazon and the sites has PVC in it. So, you know, you're talking about reading labels and I really worked hard on this and I found um, water right, I think they're called water right hoses um, that have no PVC. Um, they're going to last forever and um, they're not perfect because um, they still have to use a plastic to make them, but they're not using the PVC. So I bought them. They work great. And you know what? I don't want Palestine, Ohio to happen to anyone else in America. When, when a train carrying chemicals explodes in front of someone's home, if it's in Ohio or Louisiana or Mississippi or Washington State or California, we don't want that. We have a role in stopping that. So mm -hmm. just like you're saying, just be awake when you shop. Look for these little things. We're all learning. So don't put yourself down where I've been making tons of mistakes. We're just trying to make less of them because we're the adults. So be anti-toxic. Seek it out. Read the labels. And you know what? Your health, will, your health, your body will respond immediately. Our body knows when it's in a healthy environment and it responds. Amazing. David Steinman, thank you so much. This has been uh, an amazing message. And you can be healthier while also helping the environment, helping our world. I think it's a, it's a, it's a great message you have. Raising healthy kids should be out now. Uh, you could probably buy it on Amazon, anywhere else, any, anywhere else you want to shout out for people yeah, to follow All the you. independent booksellers and okay. uh, Barnes & Noble, all you need to do is put Raising Healthy Kids, David Steinman, into your search engine, and it's going to be up there. And uh, I, it's a great book to read. I wrote it so that you'd enjoy reading it. Lots of good stories from people like you and me that make it all real. It's not statistics. It's people. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, hope we can connect again soon. Oh, I hope so too. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, can you please leave us a rating or review and subscribe? I've realized that while we have actually increased our downloads a lot, we're actually getting a lot of downloads, which I'm really happy about. We actually have very few ratings. So, and I realized that I've never asked people really to rate much. So I'm asking you now, if you could please rate and review and subscribe. And if you enjoyed the episode, please forward it along to anyone that you think will get value out of this. Also, if you haven't checked out our line of products at buypeakperformance.com, you get 20% off your first order. That's www.buybypeakperformance.com. Com. We have some incredible products, including our organic high altitude coffee. If you don't know this, coffee is one of the most heavily sprayed with pesticides out of any crop. So it's really important that you drink organic coffee. We've gone above and beyond to source what we believe is the highest quality and healthiest organic coffee in the world. We're also famous for our organic green superfood powder. You can get 20% off of that as well at buypeakperformance.com. We also have an organic vegan and paleo plant protein. See, most of the vegan proteins out there are using brown rice protein, which is really not a good source of protein, and it's also a grain. And if you're paleo, you know that grains tend to cause inflammation in some cases for some people. And so we wanted to make one that was paleo-friendly and vegan and organic. We made an amazing amino acid profile, so it's really one of the best plant proteins for muscle building. So you can check out Peak Performance Organic Plant Protein. You can find that on our website. Of course, all our products are on Amazon as well. So thanks again. And again, please, if you enjoyed the episode, please forward it along to someone who you feel can get value out of it. And please leave us a rating, review, and subscribe. Thank you.